in which they stand. And so the Lord is doing the same thing, you see, in speaking about the poor in spirit. So he's saying, let me summarize the core meaning, what I have to say about belonging to the kingdom of heaven. That if you are poor in spirit, yours is the kingdom of heaven. Not in the future, but now, today. You are members of the kingdom of heaven. You are members of God's people, chosen for eternity. You know, as you get older, and, and the years go by, you begin to think about eternity, and death comes closer and closer to you, and how comforting it is to know the, that you are a member of God's heavenly kingdom, even today. So here is the first principle of belonging to God, upon which all other teachings then follow. You say that's wonderful. I don't know about you, it might sound wonderful, but I have, the, I have a problem with the statement, the poor in spirit. I thought once you became a follower and a disciple of Jesus Christ, that you became rich and full in the spirit, not poor in the spirit. But see, Jesus is acknowledging those that are poor in spirit. Once again, we turn to the scholars and they make this understanding of, of this particular word, poor, by looking at the Greek, Hebrew, and Aramaic meaning. Poor has two connotations. The first is that the poor lack material possessions. That they might be employed or unemployed. But they have a sense of dignity and that they accept their condition and they have hope for a prosperous future. Now can you understand that kind of poorness? No matter how poor you have, you have hope for prosperity. That's one kind of meaning. When the second reception was held for Eric and uh, Chanda at Eric's home in Louisville, Kentucky, uh, we came in and rented a car, and then we proceeded to get lost in Louisville, driving all the way. And finally we came across this huge parking lot with a tremendous structure. And it says something about S.E. Christian Church. Later I was told that this particular congregation is the third largest mega church in this country. Their sanctuary looked like Rice Stadium that holds 45,000 because their membership is 45,000. The whole church looked like a campus. Now don't forget, the University of Utah has 28 full-time students. We're talking about 45,000 members. What an amazing structure. You want to belong to this kingdom, and people will flock to this mega church. But you have to understand the preaching of that particular gospel, for it is a gospel of prosperity. You might be poor now, but you can be successful. You can be prosperous. I had a friend of mine who goes to another church sounding like that, the Abundant Life Christian Fellowship. And he's an accountant and retired, and he has a whole team of people that counsel people on budgeting. And he says, if you will tie 10%, then the Lord will bless you materially, that you will have a good job and you'll be able to afford a home. The gospel of prosperity, especially in our time, has tremendous appeal. Now, this is one understanding of what it is to be poor. To be poor so that one day, with hope you will have prosperity. Now Jesus loved the poor and he wants the living condition of those in poverty to improve. He loved them. But I don't believe Jesus spoke about the gospel of prosperity. But rather he dealt with the people just as they are. 
For he found among the poor those with, uh, without hope of prosperity. Those that were beaten and destitute, homeless, alone, sinners looking at the very face of death, perhaps. These people, in the meaning of Scripture, the poor in spirit, are those who are desperate and have no option but turn to God. And Jesus is saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for yours is the kingdom of heaven. Because these folks can't even tithe. They give all that they have to God and cling to Him by faith. Not worried about tomorrow. Just trying to make it through the day with faith. That's when Christ comes in and Christ becomes indeed Savior. That's when salvation breaks open. That's when you cling to God with all your heart, mind, and soul, as Scripture would bid us to do. To love God with heart, mind, and soul. And the poor in spirit can do that because they have no other option. So blessed are they, said Jesus. You have one option, the only option that will make them the happiest and luckiest people on earth. The Lord is my shepherd. And Don and I and those who are in clergy learn to repeat the 23rd Psalm to those that are dying, those that are bereaving. And the words go, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Not the gospel of prosperity, but the gospel truly of those who will turn to God. I have to say another thing about my son-in-law. He has a great grandfather. See, his parents are all in their 50s. And his grandparents are all my age. So <laughs> I relate to them more than I do to his parents. But there's a guy named Bill, and he just turned 80. And it was his birthday by the time we were there. And I sent him a card. 